What is going on ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to a new video. In this video, I wanna talk about how to start feeling better. A lot of people contact me letting me know that they feel anxious, they feel depressed, they just don't feel good. A lot of people contact me letting me know that they have bad digestive issues, bad sleep patterns. You know, something's clearly wrong here in this world. And we know this predicated upon just the health statistics alone. In 1976, the US Public Health Department said that only one and a half percent of all Americans were actually healthy. Again, in 1976, the US Public Health Department said that only one and a half percent of all Americans were actually healthy. And now we're here in 2021, and things aren't looking too good now, are they, folks? Diabetes statistics through the roof, depression and anxiety statistics through the roof. More people now are on antipsychotics and antidepressants than there ever has been. Something's out of alignment here. Cancer, again, statistics through the roof. People living longer, but suffering far more. People living longer, again, we live longer than our ancestors. Yet, we're suffering with far more maladies and, again, psychological disorders, digestive issues. It's horrible. I, I can't remember what the, the newest statistic on the potential of catch, or getting, developing cancer, but it's like one in two or one in three. If, I, if my memory serves me well, which is absolutely embarrassing, all of this stuff could be easily avoided, in my opinion, or a large majority of it. And we even have, you guys, mainstream sources like the U.S. Surgeon General saying that just about 65 to 70 percent of the diseases and pathologies and bad health that we experience here in this world are directly linked to and caused by and influenced by the air we breathe, the water we drink, and the food that we eat. So that's just about 65 to 70 percent of your health in your hands. Yet here in this world, people just have this pedal to the metal kind of mentality where live fast and if something happens, you know, I'll, I'll take care of it then. That is a highly irresponsible way of living. And unfortunately, that's how most people in the United States live their lives. And it doesn't take a genius. You don't have to, to figure this out. You don't have to be a brain surgeon to see that this is how people are treating themselves. This is how people are living their lives. Go to Costco and take a good look around. And that's not me being judgmental. That's me being completely honest with you. And what's the point of getting on here if I'm not gonna be honest with you? People look ill. People treat themselves horribly. People eat all the wrong food groups in, it, in excess. They drink all the wrong fluids. They're dehydrated. They're deficient in the wrong fats. And they are overabundant in the wrong fat. They're deficient in the right fats, excuse me. And they're overly abundant in the wrong fats. Again, vegetable oil consumption is through the roof. People are eating corn oil, sunflower oil, safflower oil, peanut oil, rapeseed, also known as canola oil. Grape, again, just all of this nonsense. The corn oils, the soybeans, the grapeseed, the, it's just, it's the, the consumption, excuse me, of vegetable oils is through the roof. These are high in polyunsaturated fats, they oxidize, they produce, or they create massive amounts of oxidative stress when they're consumed. And they're rancid, folks. The manufacturing process of most oils renders them rancid because a lot of these oils are exposed to excessive amounts of oxygen. And on top of that, they're using all sorts of solvents and hexanes and different things to extract a lot of these oils. It's an abomination. And if you go to the store, I challenge you, Go to a supermarket, you guys. Walk down any of the aisles and pick up, and just every five feet, make a right or a left hand turn and grab something off the shelf. There's a good chance that it's filled full or has within it vegetable oils. There's also a good chance that it's got gluten in it. What is it going on with my lighting here? There's a good chance that it also has gluten in it. So. You guys, do you want to feel better? Let's just make this let's just make this video short. Let's not elaborate too much. You want to feel better? You've got to change the way you live your life. And the two most 
drastic changes that you can make that are actually quite easy that will lead to you feeling much better in a relatively short amount of time is you eliminating vegetable oils, processed oils in a bottle from your diet, and you getting rid of gluten. While at the same time increasing your saturation of real foods or you know start eating real foods. This is why I developed the 70-30 split diet system. Links are in the description box below. But it's a basic foundation that anyone can follow. And as you get used to eating 70% of your calories from real food, then you move to the 80-20 split, 80% real food, 20% whatever you want. Then you move to the 90-10 system, 90% real food, 10% whatever you want. And then you get on the 100 system, which is all 100% real food, but the right foods. And I'm in the process of putting an entire food pyramid together, you name it. So just bear with me. That will be available first on the Patreon page before it ever goes public. But you're going to have to, if you want to feel better, and if you do the 100 system, you're going to have to wean yourself off of oils, and you're going to have to get off of gluten. Gluten is incredibly difficult to digest. There are two main proteins in gluten. Gluten is a family of proteins found in starches, particular starches in grains, such as, but not limited to, wheat, barley, rye, and spelt, and kamut. And these two main proteins, glutenin and gliadine, out of the, both of those, the gliadine or the gliadin, depending on who you ask, people pronounce it differently, but there's glutenin and gliadine. These are the two primary proteins found in gluten. But gliadin or gliadine is the most difficult to digest protein in gluten and it's, it causes the most amount of negative health consequences or reactions when it's consumed. It destroys, gluten destroys the microvilli, the villi in your intestines that absorb your nutrients. It destroys, it wreaks havoc on the absorptive tissues of your GI tract, which makes it very difficult to absorb nutrients from food regardless of what, what you're eating. So if you've consumed gluten for years on end, like most Americans have, you're getting a, a drastically limited amount of nutrients from the food that you're eating because of how gluten ruins your digestive tissues, your absorptive system, and your gastrointestinal tract, your alimentary tract, which is the tubing from your mouth to your anus. And what do most people, what do most people do when they consume gluten? They consume gluten with other foods. So you might have a sandwich with a bunch of gluten in it and you think, oh man, this sandwich has got some turkey, some, you know, you know, it's got some, some high quality turkey, it's got some vegetables. Man, I'm gonna be getting a lot out of these vegetables. I'm gonna be getting a lot out of the high quality ingredients on this sandwich. Well, it's bound to gluten. Gluten leaves a sticky residuous residue, a pasty residue do in your small intestine, in your GI tract. And over time, this builds up and it creates mucus as a buffer to compensate for all this residue. And it hinders the health of your villi your absorptive uh, system that absorbs nutrients. So that's the genius of gluten, you guys. Gluten destroys your ability to absorb nutrients. It increases inflammation. It increases the presence of cytokines in your system. Your body basically attacks itself when you're constantly consuming gluten. And just because you've got a test that says that, oh, I don't have celiac disease, that does not mean that doesn't mean that you don't have a gluten sensitivity. If you look into the research of Dr. Peter Glidden and Joel Wallach, it looks like 85% or more of the population has a gluten sensitivity. And gluten does not just attack your intestines. It sure as hell does that, but it also attacks your brain. It can affect any organ system and it can cause a whole host of symptoms psychological symptoms, it can exacerbate autism and ADHD and Parkinson's. It can exacerbate and bring on Alzheimer's and depression. It can absolutely and undeniably create diarrhea and it can just destroy your, again, your digestive capabilities. It can cause constipation. It can cause, and it can contribute to osteopenia and osteoporosis folks. It can contribute to the formation and development of cancer and diabetes. It's a bad substance. It's a very bad toxic substance. And why is it that on the bottom of the food pyramid, 
You have gluten containing constituents, grains, pastas, whole grains, and all this bullshit. So if you want to feel better, here's a simple formula on how to do it. I'm not saying that this is going to be some overnight fix. I'm not saying that this is going to completely get rid of your anxiety and your depression because a lot of these things we can't just fix with food. However, we can take a huge load off with food because of how certain foods cause massive amounts of inflammation and physiological disorder. And if we can reduce the inflammation and disorder, that's going to make your mind feel much better, especially if you have chronic inflammation of the brain, you name it. More and more research is coming out showing that anxiety issues and depression might have a link to inflammation. And let's just maybe look at what most people eat. They eat inflammatory foods constantly. So remove the vegetable oils from your diet. Oil in a bottle. Get rid of the olive oil. Get rid of the coconut oil. Get rid of the oil, the cottonseed, and all the garbage. So let's just do three things here not just two things to make you feel better. You're gonna to have to get rid of the vegetable oils, you're gonna to have to get rid of the processed foods, and you're gonna to have to get rid of the gluten. I say processed foods because processed foods are crap. They're not gonna help you rebuild your body. We know through research, such as the research of Dr. John W. Apsley II, that every three and one half years, the body basically repairs and rebuilds itself from the ground up, bones, blood, intestinal lining, eye tissue, hair, skin, your body constantly repairs itself, predicated upon the quality of food that you put in or lack thereof. So if you're rebuilding your body on Funyuns and processed carbohydrates and rancid oxidized oils and gluten, what do you think you're gonna get in return? You're not gonna get much in return, folks. Are you? Now on top of that, gluten and vegetable oils are often found together in processed foods. So eliminating these entirely, this is how you're gonna feel better. And I would also suggest some magnesium. This is the magnesium product that I advocate. This is Ultra Mag. This is from Source Naturals. I highly, you know, if you're gonna take magnesium, I've taken magnesium for years. I've experimented with so many different types. And I'm glad that I have because over the years, I've I've been able to discover which ones work the best, which types of magnesium. And I, I think for most Americans, especially due to how compromised most people's digestive systems are, which leads to malabsorption of nutrients, I think that a quality magnesium complex, why doesn't this show up on my screen? A quality magnesium complex is going to be the best way to go, you guys. So again, I, I advocate this because this is cheap. There are higher quality you know, magnesium complexes on the market that don't have as many additives like the, you know, the acacia gum and the, uh, you know, the silica, etc. But I, I like to recommend things that are cheap, that are kind of grassroots, that anyone can kind of get their hands on. All these people online are recommending these really expensive treatments and supplements. That's fine if you have it, but I want to make a foundation that can be approached by pretty much anyone. And this is the Source Naturals Ultra Mag. This has got some vitamin B6 in it. It's got magnesium citrate, uh, succinic acid complex, glycinate, magnesium glycinate, malate, and magnesium and a taurine complex. Excuse me, this is a perfect uh, magnesium. So, again, this has kind of been a scattered video, but I, I would suggest if you want to feel better, address the quality of air you breathe, water you drink, and food that you eat. Get off the gluten in the oils and the processed foods. Start using butter in tallow, grass-fed beef tallow or lard, real lard, not lard mixed with a bunch of garbage. Use those types of fats to cook. Ideally, you don't really even need to use much other than butter to cook. Butter is filled full of constituents that our body actually knows how to do something with. So, and you can get Kerrygold grass-fed butter at most mainstream supermarkets nowadays. Um, so the removal of those particular foods, the processed foods, the oils, the gluten, and the increase of real foods, and I would highly suggest, as just as a basic start, through two to six months, or excuse me, what am I saying? Three to six months on a magnesium complex while you go through all of this. This is gonna ease the transition 
It's gonna make you feel better. Magnesium, you guys, we are, we are tanked on magnesium. I've been a fan of magnesium for 10 years now, ever since I heard Dr. Kassar lecture about it. It's a genius micronutrient and mineral. Um, you know, it's, it's a genius mineral, excuse me. It's a master mineral is what I meant to say. It regulates thousands of functions in your body and when we're chronically stressed, we actually burn through, our body burns through magnesium to um, compensate for stress. Our body, the creator is so genius. It des the creator designed us to actually have like backup systems to burn through in terms of minerals and nutrients when we're stressed. Whether that be environmental stress from all of the heavy metals we're exposed to or emotional stress, which actually does cause you know, a change in our hormones and our, our health. We burn through magnesium when we're, when we're stressed and we're all stressed. We're all deficient in a handful of nutrients. This is a very basic system that I've just put, I wanted to share with you. Obviously this can be, you know, this can be totally built upon and made better. You might want to look into something known as NAC also, a supplement known as NAC. Um, sorry, I just got a, a notification on my screen. NAC actually helps your body produce glutathione, which is a master antioxidant. I'm not saying that you should necessarily take NAC long term, but it can. Um, NAC can produce, help your body produce glutathione, which is really going to help you recover from all the oxidative damage that's happened within your body, from all the oils and the bad foods, all the free radicals in your system that are destroying your skin and your health. So again, do the 70-30 split, get better rest, block blue light when the sun goes down with the Uvex Skyper blue blocking sunglasses so that you can produce endogenous melatonin so that your brain can actually get rest. It's amazing how much of an assault we're all under, you guys. It is amazing how much of an assault we are all under and it's amazing how much damage this body can actually endure. This body absolutely loves us and wants us to thrive, but we've got to get out of the way of its ability to heal. It's like we're constantly picking scabs. What I mean by that is we're constantly getting in the way of the healing process. Gluten is not going to help you heal. Vegetable oils are not going to help you heal. Processed foods are not going to help you heal. Bad rest is not going to help you heal. Being deficient in micronutrients and minerals and vitamins is not going to help you heal. I would highly suggest looking into the research of Linus Pauling and Dr. Abram Hoffer, the psychiatrist who used niacin therapy on schizophrenic patients with remarkable results. Orthomolecular medicine is incredible. You know, all of these people saying that, oh, we should just get all of our nutrients from food. You know, synthetic vitamins are dangerous, blah, blah, blah. Good luck in the underworld here in this dimension. It's almost damn near impossible to get everything that you need while living in the technological grid, the concrete jungle. There is nothing wrong with synthetic vitamin C. There is nothing wrong with supplemental vitamins and minerals. So you have people online right now who've built their entire, you know, online health identity, these health, you know, coaches, saying that, oh, you know, you don't need any supplements. You don't need a multivitamin, this, that, and the other. And then they're, they're turning around and selling you, you know, their magnesium products or I'm, I'm not going to name any names. Don't try to, th I don't even know why I brought that up, but it's just, it's, it's strange to me why so many people, you know, that they're, they're against synthetics. Synthetics are not a bad thing, ladies and gentlemen. Obviously, I wish we lived in a world where we didn't have to supplement, but in a world that's this toxic, supplements can actually help us get from point A to point B much quicker. Magnesium has done nothing but benefit me. Magnesium deficiencies are directly linked to heart failure, heart disease, heart attacks. And a lot of people are tanked. They are very low on magnesium. So again, this is the magnesium product that I endorse. This is a great supplement to use while getting started on the 70-30 split. The 70-30 split is a diet system that anyone can follow. I wanted to produce something and make something that anyone could approach. There's no dogma here. There's no, you know, there's no, you must do this, you must do that. This diet system is very easy. And what I mean by you must not do this, you must not do that, is I'm not asking you to eliminate entirely certain food groups. 
I'm allowing you to consume 30% of your calories from whatever you want. This is gonna help you get used to eating 70% of your calories from real food. If you allow that 30% to stay there, your gut microbiome is not gonna be thrown into a total shift. Your hormones aren't gonna be thrown into a, a huge shift. You're not gonna be, you're not gonna have elevated stress. You're gonna be able to feed the parts of your body and your mind that are still addicted to certain foods that are considered non-optimal. So as you do the 70-30 split and you get accustomed to this, you guys, then you move to the 80-20 split whenever you're ready. I would not suggest hanging around the 70-30 split for longer than six months to a year though. Don't get too comfortable with it. Once you get, you know, once you get comfortable and you feel that it's easy to eat the bulk of your calories from real foods, then move to the 80-20 split. And then I would stay in the 80-20 for about half as long as you stayed in the 70-30. So, again you guys, real basic. Real basic, real easy, real simple diet system that I've put together that'll, that gives you a lot of freedom. And I'm in the process right now of putting an entire system together. Um, maybe I'll even put it on DVDs. I don't know because there's so many slides I've put together on like what foods to eat, what's to, which foods to avoid, what supplements to take, you name it. So, thought I heard someone pulling up. Again, you guys, in this world, there's so in today's modern world, there's so many dogmatic diets. I wouldn't say dogmatic, I'd say they're very restrictive. So I, I think that a ketogenic diet if done properly can produce a lot of benefit, but I, for, but you know, I don't think it's sustainable long term. I think that lowering, getting rid of all processed refined carbohydrates is great, but there's nothing wrong with rice and sweet potatoes and red potatoes, red potato juice, one of my favorites. We just need to, in my opinion, instead, and this is why I put the 70-30 split together in the 80-20, 90-10, and 100 system. I, I just wanna see people eat real food. Once the population gets accustomed to real food, then let's worry about what the best diet for humans is. But in my opinion, the best diet, diet for humans at this point is just getting people on the right direction. Just getting people in walking down the right direction. Enough of this, you must eat this way, you must not eat that way, blah, blah, blah. Let's just get in the going in the right direction and then worry about that. As you get accustomed to eating real foods, then worry about letting go of some of the other stuff. I hope that makes sense. I don't want to sound contradictive because as you move through my system, you've got to let go of the oils and you've got to let go of the gluten. But if you're on the 70-30 split and you're addicted to gluten and the oils, you can still have some of those in that 30% of your intake. But over time, you're gonna to wanna to let go of those because we know through research that gluten and the oils, they're not good for us. They're just not. And I hate to be, I hate to be the, the bearer of bad news, but what's so wrong about change? What's so, what's so wrong about saying, okay, I'll try this for a year. Let me get rid of the oils and the gluten for a year. Let's try it for two months even, just two months. There's a good chance you're gonna feel better. So, and you know, I, I, and I, I advocate, excuse me, butter and animal fats. You know, that could even be duck fat, you name it. Now, you can put a lot of these on your skin to moisturize, you name it, and I'm gonna make a video about that in the near future. But I just wanna clarify something before I wrap this video up. Even when I was a vegan, I was very against mass-produced vegetable oils and I always only promoted tropical oils. The tropical oils, things like palm oil and coconut oil are gonna be much healthier for you than the corn oil, the soybean oil, the cottonseed oil, the hazelnut oil, and all the bullshit. So if you're plant-based, if you're vegan and you don't wanna consume butter, I understand. Your tropical oils are gonna be your best bet. Your coconut oils, your palm oils, and your avocado oils. I don't really necessarily know if avocado is considered a tropical oil. I've always considered it one. Um, and if you don't want your food to taste like coconut, you can always consume the refined coconut oil. It has no flavor. Obviously, it's not the greatest thing in the world in terms of health, but it, I mean, certain things you're gonna have to let, let go of if you're choosing to be vegan or plant-based. You're not gonna be able to eat butter, and I understand that. Butter is filled full of healthy saturated fats if it's from a good source. And it's just so much easier for our body to digest. 
So that was kind of a mouthful, you guys. 70-30 split information is in the link, or is in the description box below. Again, I would suggest getting on a magnesium complex. This is the Ultra Mag. I've got this in my Amazon store. Um, address the quality of the water you drink, the air you breathe, and the food that you eat. 70% of your food, real food, 30% whatever you want. But I would highly suggest, if you're really interested in feeling better in a short amount of time, Jump off the gluten bandwagon and jump off the vegetable oils. Get off the processed carbohydrates. Start eating, eating real food. It's really pretty simple, you guys. It really is simple. And once you start feeling better, you're gonna naturally wanna keep doing this because no amount of good tasting food can supersede what it feels like to feel good. To be motivated, to feel dedicated, to, you know. I've got so many things in my mouth that I'm just, I've got so many things in my mind that are just wanting to come out of my mouth too quickly, so bear with me. When you get on the right track, when you let go of the gluten, when you let go of the oils, you guys, your desire to work, to be creative, to get things done, to be proactive is going to skyrocket. It has a very profound anti-anxiety, anti-depressant effect. And if you're like a writer and you have writer's block, if you're an artist and you're just struggling to be creative, take an inventory on what you eat. Now, I hate to say this, but a lot of times artists and poets, and poets, things of that nature, very creative people, they have horrible diets. They smoke cigarettes. They eat, eat a bunch of shit. Take an inventory on what you're eating. Your creativity is going to skyrocket when you get rid of these specific food groups that cause massive amounts of oxidative stress inflammation and damage to your body. It's really pretty simple. There's a lot more that I could say, but until next time, may peace be with you all. I love you.